So today we want to check out HOF. HOF, HOF stands for higher order functions. Higher order functions. So what are HOFs? Yeah, you, is that a question to the class or? No, no, no. I'm, no it's, it's not to the class. Okay, okay. So, okay, sorry. So HOFs are functions that take other functions as parameters or functions that return other functions. So HOFs are either functions that take other functions as parameters or functions that return other functions. Some HOF even did it too. They do the two. That is, they take other functions as parameters and at the same time they return functions. So, but in summary, a function that either returns another function or a function that takes another function as parameter is known as HOF. Let's cite the codes. Let's say I have the function like this. First, my function. Just to this. I have a function. Let's get another function. First, second function. So we have two functions like this. Now what you're going to do is this. I'll come here and put an argument in. I can just call it A, like this. So if you now come here and say my func, we trigger this first function. But instead of passing a value like this, you know, if I say console log A, I'm sorry someone wants to join, let me be admin this person. So if I say console log A, like this. This is going to log 6 to the console. That is, this 6 will be sent as the value of this A and it will log it to the console. But in this case, what we are doing is that instead of sending a number like this or maybe a sign like this as the value of this A, instead we will send a O function as the value of this. So instead of adding just a string or a primitive data type like that, you put a function there, second function. So when you call on this, this whole function becomes the value of this A. So this function, this my func, that takes a whole function as its own parameter is known as higher order function. In this case, my func is known as HOF. Do you have any question on that before we move on? So, a function, this my function, that takes another function as its own parameter is known as HOF. Now, uh, remember, we are sending this second function to my function. So, the function that you are sending as a parameter to an HOF is known as a callback. I come again. The function that you are passing as parameter to a higher order function is known as a callback. So in this case, we say this second func is a callback. So my func is a higher order function, while second func is a callback. Now, uh, we are not going to deep into HOF. Let's look at some inbuilt HOF in JavaScript. Some inbuilt HOF in JavaScript. And uh, we are going to check out just three of them. And the reason we are checking out this story is because they are usually used with uh, in React.js. Remember, the end of this class is to prepare us for the React.js session. So we want to look at some HOFs that are usually used in uh, React.js. So let's create an array. We have this array like this. Now, these three that we want to check out, they are used with arrays. This is the HF that I want to check out. We shall map, filter, find. Map, filter, find. There are other HOFs. There are other HOFs. But you see this story, they are mainly used with arrays and you are going to use them a lot in React.js. That's why we are checking them. Let's pick them one after the other.
let's make the first one map so you say array dot map that is the name of your array you say dot map so when you are mapping you pass this map is an hof because this is a hof that means that uh it either takes a function as its parameter right right that means it either takes a function as its parameter or it returns a function remember hof are functions that either take another function as parameters or functions that return another function now this map is an hof and for that reason uh, please let's mute our mic oh just so this map being an HOF, it means that it takes another function as its own argument. So let's create that function together. So I'll come here and say, cost, let's just call it my func. So we pass this my func to this map. We pass my func to this map like this. So what JavaScript is going to do is that is going to call on the function inside this map based on the number of items in this array so i put it to us how many items do we have inside this array how many items how many items do we have in this array three yeah good three so and for that reason, it means that it's going to run the codes inside this my funk three times because there are three items in this array. So I'll come here and say console log hello. Like this. Console log hello. Like this. So when you check it now, you're going to see hello three times. That's because there are three items in this array. If there are four items there, you will see this hello four times. Let's turn this on the browser and see the results. So I'll open the browser's console now. You have this hello three times. Okay, hello, hello, hello. You have this three times. Let's move on. Now let's increase the number of items here. Let's say now we have four items. On get to see the console, we see four. Let's move on. Now at this point now, this map is working like for each. For each is another HOF in JavaScript. We are not going to go into that. Uh, go deep into that. But in this case, map is now working like for each. And you may have start asking that what is the difference between the map and the for each? What is the difference between map and for each? That's the next thing we want to look at. You see, one big difference between them is that a map, the, this callback, remember I called this a callback. I said that function that you pass as a parameter to HOF is known as a callback. This my func, this callback can return a value if you are using map. But when you are using for each, it cannot return a value. I come again. When you are using map, it can return a value. When you are using for each, it cannot return a value. Let's look at this together. Instead of saying, uh, okay, I'll just say return i. Let's have this. Return i. So what JavaScript is going to do is that when you call on this, if you call on this four times, remember I said it's run this based on the number of items in this. And each time you call on it, each time, that each of the four times, it will return high. That high will be returned back to this place. And that's not the end. You can now save this as a variable. And say console log A. You are returning I. Okay, let's take it. ARL.map. So it's going to pick, do this the first time. It will return high. The i will be returned back here and it will push it inside this a. If you call on it again, it will return hi. The i will be returned here, it will push it inside this a. If you call it the third time, it will return hi. The i will be returned, it will push it inside this a. If you call on it again the fourth time, 
the i will be returned and it will be pushed into this a this return value will be returned back to this port and it will be inserted in this a so when you check this a a will display i four times a will be an array that contains i four times a will be an array that contains i for i i i i any questions so far any question now let's use for you know, I think I have a question okay sir okay the question is why is the eye turning in so far and away okay uh, that's one of those things map does for you when you return the value when the value is returned the map will push it into this thing it's going to create an array out of this the result of when you use, use map the result of map is always an array i can't imagine. the result of map is always an array so map creates a new array then it will now push the return value into that new array this is going to create a new array then each time it returns a value that value will be pushed into the new array if this were to be let's say i return uh six this is going to return six four times remember i said it's going to call on it four times each time it returns the value it will always push it into the new array do you understand map creates a new array the result of map are there is, it, is it overriding the 8 12 and 15 no and the 50 that we have there before no ARL still remains intact. If you check out ARL, if you say cancel out ARL, you will realize that it's still intact. Nothing happens to ARL. Let's check it out. So, you see, this is it. It's 50, 50, 50. This still remains intact. So that's why I said it creates a new array. That's how map works. The result of map will be a new array entirely that contains the return value please let's be that right let's, let's check the background background noise any so, question <coughs> yes, sir. A, a question is, can we can we now conclude that this array the arr is is serving as a as a counter for, for the map functions to return something uh, yes, it is. It is, but it's even much more than that. As we move forward, we see other things it can do. So for now, yes, it's serving as a counter. If you have four items here, it will return this return value four times. If you have six items here, it will return this value six times. If you have, oh, sorry, let's. Where is the noise coming from? Please kindly mute your mic. So if you have six items here, it will send. So if you have six items in this in this area, this map will return this return value six times. If you have ten items in this place, it will return this return value ten times. But then, uh, the result of this is a new array entirely, and it's not going to tamper with this A. Uh, uh, this area will still remain intact. Any question? Now, if you try this with for each, for each will not return a new array. In fact, for each you always return undefined. And when you check the value of your A, it will just be undefined. It will be undefined. That's one big difference between for each and map. For each does not return, does not allow you to use a return value, like to use to return a value inside the callback. Map allows you to return a value in the core. That has one big difference between them. Can we move forward? Uh, is Hello. Hello, I can hear you. Okay, my question is, is it really necessary to use, like, when, when you are doing a callback, like a callback function, is it really necessary to use a map or something, like, as for each? Like, you are trying to call a function, you are trying to call a function, 
maybe some special process here. Maybe. And is it really necessary to use math or you just you can just call it like call it outside the code for the program? Oh, I don't really get okay. the question very well. Your and uh, your voice is not okay. clear. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. What I'm saying is that okay, what we have here, we have a okay. Uh, uh, that, uh, that, that. Okay. And the number three they are in to call the function. Okay. And each of the equation of that uh, math to so retrieve that function. Okay. Now, is it the best practice? Now, is it okay to call a function, like call a function inside a map or for each statement? Okay. Is it okay to call on it inside a map? Please, who understand this question? I'm not getting the question. Is it okay to call a function inside the map? Or, or are you saying that can we pass another fun can we call another function inside this place? No, what I'm asking is that we have a function, we want to call the function. Actually, we don't want to call the function twice or more than one. Maybe you want to call the function one. Okay. But from what I'm saying now, okay. Each time, each time we can check for the number of items in the array. Okay. And it's called the function based on the time, the numbers of the yes. items in that array. Yes. So my question is, is it like, is it necessary to call it inside the math or for each? No, no, you can, even, you can call your function out here like this. You can call on my function directly. Okay, and, and what do you mean is this advice to call the function inside either, okay, inside any equation like for each? Uh, what happens is it depends on what you are doing uh, as time goes on in the course of today's class you are going to use say, instances where map makes your work easier using map filter and find how they make your work easier or instances situations whereby you use them we are going to look at that also in today's class when to use them we are first learning how they work like how map works that's what we are doing presently we want to see how it works. After learning how it works, we now look at when to use map. Do you understand? Hello, do you understand? Now, let's move forward. Please, let's mute our mic if you are not asking questions. Reginald. Cut it, please. Uh, there's noise coming from your hand. Okay, let's move on. So, remember I said it's going to call on this based on the number of items in this array. Next is this. Sometimes you want to make use of these values inside this callback, inside this function. The values in this array. Sometimes you want to make use of the values in this array. This 8, 12, 15, 50. You want to use them inside this function, inside this cover, the cover that we are passing here. How do you go about it? So, that's it. Yes. Remember, I said it's going to call on this four times now because there are four items here. But really, this is how it works. JavaScript will pick the first value in this array, in this area, it will give it to map. Map will pick the first that value given to it. It will give it to my phone. My phone will pick that value and assign it to var. Do you understand? I come again. JavaScript will pick the first value in this ARL. It will give it to map. Map gives this to my phone. My phone will now assign that value to whatever argument you put here. Whatever you put here. Whatever. If this were to be, let's say, um, num. Now we now be eight. It will pick the first value here. It will give map. Map will give my func. My func will assign it to whatever you put here. So let's say console log. No. So this is going to console log eight. When it is done, it will return six. So that value var six will be returned back to this place and it will be pushed inside a. When it is done with that, it will pick the second value again. 
here I'll give it to map. Map gives this to my phone. My phone gives this to num. It will console log num, which is 12. Then it will return 6. That 6 will be returned back to this place and it will be pushed inside A. When it is done, it goes to the next value in A, which is 15. That 15 will be given to map. Map gives this to my funk. My funk assigns it to whatever you put here, which is num. It will console log 15. Since num is 15, then it will return 6. 6 will be returned back and it will be pushed inside A. When it is done, it goes to the next value, which is 50. 50 will be given to map. Map will give it to my funk. My funk gives this to num. It will console log num, which is 50. It will return 6. That 6 will be returned back here and it will be pushed inside A. So if you say console log A, A will still have 6666. Six, six, six. But then this line we console log 8, 12, 15, 50. Do you understand? Let's go by it again. JavaScript will pick the first value in this error. It gives map. Map gives this to my funk. My funk will assign it to whatever name you put here. So we are consoling it. Console log. We are logging into the console. Console log num. Of course, remember I said that num will be 8 now. So it will console log 8. Then it will return 6. The return value will be sent back to this place and it will be pushed inside A. So 6 will be pushed inside A. When it is done, it goes to the next value in this area, which is 12. 12 will be given to map. Map will give it to my funk. My funk will assign it to this num. It will console log num, which is 12. When it's done, it will return 6. It will return it back to this same place and it will push it inside A. After that, it looks for the next value inside this area, which is 15. 15 will be given to map. Map gives this to my funk. My phone can sign this to num, it will console log num, which is 15. Then it will return 6. That 6 will be returned back to the same spot and it will be pushed inside A. Then when it's done, it goes to the last item, which is 50. It gives this to map. Map gives my funk. My funk, my funk can sign this to num, it will console log num, which is 50. Then it will return 6. That 6 is returned back to the same spot and it will be pushed inside A. So when you check A, you have six six sixes in A. But you see this line? This line will console log 8, 12, 15, 50. So whenever you need to make use of the value, the values inside this area, in, inside your callback, then all you need to do is just to put a parameter here. Just put a parameter here. Any question? Sorry, I'll, I'll be using parameter and argument interchangeably. Parameter argument. So you see it. 12, 15, 50. 8, 12, 15, 50. Then this is the A. Also, like A, 6, 6, 6, 6. Question, question, question. Do you have any question? Okay. Someone is saying that. Okay, okay, yeah, you can ask your question. Hello? Yes, you can ask your question. Yes, good evening. So I think uh, from the function, from the function, okay. I think it, it is that not a, uh, a, an argument being passed. So when we are about to call the function with the map, I think I was expecting maybe we pass a value. So is it that because we use map, that's why there's no need for us to pass any value to call the function? Yes. And if you observe, we are not really calling on this function in map. If you are calling on a function, you would have had to do something like this. You are not calling, you put the whole function here. That's the way map works. You it expects a whole function, not the not the function call. No. You put the whole no, function. So we are, not, okay, we, we are not calling function yet. Yes, you just pa you put the function name itself. Pass. Yes, you pass okay. the function name itself. So map will undo the rest for you. What you're just going to do is so, for it. So, okay. Sorry, so because it, we are using map, that's why automatically the E understand that the elements in the in the array serve as a uh, uh, value to use. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's the way my point. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll learn new things in this next. Okay. That's not any Thank other you. question. You're welcome. Okay. Let's move on. So, uh, another thing is this. Sometimes you don't just need the value, each of these value. 
sometimes you also need the index of those values, the index inside this callback. You need the index of those values. So how do you go about that? You see, the way map works is that once it sees that you have two arguments here, the second argument automatically represents the index. Let's go by it. Now, if you run this code, when it gets to this place, it sees ARR, it's going to pick the first value here, it will give it to map. Map gives my funk. My funk assign it to num, which meaning num will be 8. Now, this i will be the index of this num. The index of num is 0. The index of 8 in this ARR is 0. So this i will automatically be 0. So let's say console log i, comma, or num, comma, i. So now will be 8 and i will be 0. Then it will return 6. When it's done, it picks the next value here. Okay, it will return 6 to this place and it will push it inside this place. When it's done, it picks the next value here, which is 12. It will pass it to map. Map gives this to this. That 12 will be assigned to num. And the index of 12, which is 1, will be assigned to i. So it's going to console log 12, 1. Then it will return 6. That 6 is returned back to this place and it will be pushed inside a. When it's done, it picks the next value, which is 15. 15 will be given to map. Map gives my funk. My funk assigns it to num. Then the index of 15, which is 2, will be given to i. It's console log 15, 2. Then it's returned 6. So after it's done, it's, that 6 is returned back to this place and it will be pushed inside a. Then it picks the next value, which is 50. It gives map. Map gives my funk. My funk gives num. Then the index of that 50 will be i. That is three, then it's console log 50 comma three, then it returns six, that six will be returned back here and be pushed inside A. So this will now console log the A array, which is array that contains six, 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 six. Now note that this I can be anything. It's very much to use I. Immediately map sees that this function has two arguments here. It will assign the value to num and it will assign the index of that value to this. Do you understand? It's not a must use. I, of course, we usually use i for indexes. But I'm just trying to make other lines. It's not a must use i. 8, 0, 12, 1, 15, 2, 53. So it's not a must use i. You can use anything. But understand that whatever, once it sees that there are two here, then that second, uh, the index will automatically be this. Any question? Can we proceed? Now, it can still take one more, but we are not, we hardly use the third one. We hardly use the third one. It can still take one more argument, but let's focus, let's oops, stop here. These two. Now, when do you make use of map? When do you use map? So let's say I want to create a new array. Look at this. Let's say you have to create a new array, and in that new array, it will contain all the values in this original array, but the value times two. That is, you want to create a new array that looks like this. Let's, say, let's call this second array. And you want it to be eight times two, 16. 12 times two, 24. 15 times two, 30. 50 times two, 100. So you want to create a new array out of the first one, such that the new array will contain, let's say, twice of each value in the first array map comes to mind that's how we can easily use map to produce these results instead of using for loop and all of that then let's see how we can use map to get this so instead of returning six here we can say return num times two so let's see how this works if you pick the first value here it will give it to map Map gives my funk. My funk assigned it to num. Now we are not using this editing, so you can remove it. We are, we are not using it. So let's start it. Let's go over it again. It picks the first value here. It gives this to map. Map gives my funk. My funk assigns it to num. It returns num times two, eight times two. That's 16, right? So that means it returns 16. That 16 will be returned back here and it will be pushed inside A. When it is done, it goes to the next when it is done it goes to the next value in this uh, 
The next value here is 12. It gives this to map. Map gives my funk. My funk assigns this to null. It returns 12 times 2, 24. It returns it back to this spot. Then it will push it inside A. So that 24 will be pushed inside A. When it is done, it goes to the next value, which is 15. 15 will be given to map, given to my funk. My funk assigns this to num. It will return num times 2. 15 times 2, that's 30. 30 will be returned back to this spot and it will be pushed inside A. So 30 will be pushed inside A. When it's done, it goes to the next value, which is 50. It gives this to map. Map gives my funk. My funk assigns this to num. Then it returns num times 2. That's 50 times 2, 100. 100 will be returned back to this spot and it will be pushed inside A. So at the end of the day, when you console log A, you have 16, 24, 30, 100. Let's sum it together. This does not affect the original array. If you still console log A around, it is, the original array will still remain in parts. Original array is still in parts. So this is how you can easily use map to look through an array. It's, see, all, all that you are going to do with your map filter and find, you can use your traditional for loop. But map filter and find makes it shorter and I think cleaner. It makes things shorter and cleaner. Do you understand? It makes it shorter and cleaner. Now, but you can still you can still reduce this code. From our last class, I explained to us that you can use this arrow to return a value. That whenever you are using this arrow to return a value, then you can remove this return keyword and you remove this curly braces. And that's what you are going to do now. Use the arrow to return a value like this. It's still going to work like before. Of course, you can. This is optional. So I choose to remove it also. Now, it's still going to work exactly like before. This arrow is now serving as return. I explained that in the last class. It's now serving as return. And uh, what it's going to do is that it the first value here. It gives this. This gives this. It assigns it to num. Then it's return num times 2, 16 times, uh, 8 times 2, 16. That is returned back to this port and it is pushed inside A. Then it gives the second value. It gives this to this. This gives this. This assigns it to num. Num times 2, that's 12 times 2. That's uh, 24. 24 will be returned back and it will be pushed inside A. Then when it's done, it goes to the next value, which is 15. 15 given to map. Map gives my funk. It assigns this to num. 15 times 2, that's 30. It will be turned back to this place and it will be pushed inside A. When it's done, it goes to the next value, which is 50. 50 will be given to this. This gives this. It assigns this to num. Num, it then it returns 50 times 2, which is 100. It will be turned back and it will be pushed inside A. So, so when it's done, it will console log A. Any question? Yeah, can I ask a question, please? Yes, you can. Yeah, with the for each function, if you introduce a, re, a return uh, in the body of the function, will it behave like the uh, the map function? No, for each cannot return a value. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. Okay. So I'll find the find. Okay. That's my file. So how uh, now? When you see people using map, it's, uh, it's not common that you see people use it like this. It is not common. So you can still shorten it, and that you are going to be seeing more of the shortened version. You will see more of the shortened version. So let's, uh, of course, when we get to React also, we, we're going to be using more of the shortened version. So for that reason, let's get used to it as early as possible. So, you know, this is the function name, right? That is const my funk equals to whatever is here, right? Uh, what I mean is this: if I say const k equals to five, and I say alert a times two, can I also say uh, can can I also say alert five times two? That is, whatever I see a, I can easily replace it with five, right? Are we together? That is const a equals to five. Instead of saying alert a times two, it's still the same as saying alert five times two. This is going to give us 10. 
also by saying a times 2 this will also give us 10 now let's use the same logic here using this same logic whenever I see my funk I can replace it with this norm arrow norm times 2 do you understand whenever I see uh, whenever I see my funk I can replace it with these parts so what I'm going to do is that instead of first creating my funk and uh, using it here we can now do it this way I'll copy this so that we can we can easily go back to it and see how it looks like I will move to comment out this part I'll just say I will remove this part now so instead of my funk I can now replace it with this we still have the same results so instead of first creating my funk then putting my funk here I can just copy what is at the front here and put it here do you understand? You still have the same result. And this, you're going to be seeing more of this shortened version. If, if first creating the function and putting it there, if, uh, if you understand that very well, you can stick to that. But as time goes on, uh, the more you use it, the more you realize that oh, you can easily use it like this and uh, you see how lovely it will be to make your code look shorter yeah, and neater. So, this will still give us the same results, just like before. So, this is 16, 24, 30, 100. Any question? Okay. My question is about the function that is just commenting on. Okay, supposing the function is doing something that you might likely want to use another part of the function. Like in uh, another section, or maybe in another, like in another part of the project. So is it really necessary, or is it not suited to just to get the function and sit and maybe use this instead of calling like having it the way you say it is now? And then this one is more simple, but is it not necessary? Maybe you have another, or maybe in another field of the project. You want to multiply k by k with the number of other ways. But you have already done this one. So let's just call it the kind of uh, uh, local state. Instead of it being a global state, that you can recall it and use it to get the same functionality. So which of this is more about it? Or is there anything different that makes it look easy to do? That is what it is to do. That makes it look easy Thank you for your question. Now, uh, thank you for your question. In case you are using this function elsewhere, this is my font, then it's not going to be called to date like this if you are using it elsewhere. But since we are not using it elsewhere, we are only using it here, that's why we can easily shorten it like this. But if you are still using this function, my font, elsewhere in your code, then doing it like this means you have to write code twice, which will not be cool. It should not be cool. So, if you're using it, just like you said, if you're using it elsewhere, then just uh, do it the way we did it initially, just like this, do it like this. Do the function right there like this. Okay. Any other question? Okay, so we've seen map, we've seen how map works. Let's go to the next thing, which is filter. Filter. Filter, I'll, I'll use the long method first. Then, as time goes on, we shorten it back to the shorter one, then we shorten everything. Okay. Now, filter uh, is like your filter paper in chemistry or your sieve, your sieve of filter paper. A filter paper and a sieve, they do virtually the same thing in the sense that when you pour items in either a filter paper or a sieve, it allows some items to go to it and uh, some items will not be allowed to. Items that are shorter, uh, that are smaller than the, let's say, diameter of the sieve or filter paper, will be able to pass to it. But items that are bigger than that will not be able to pass to it. It's the same with filter. 
Filter allows some items to pass to it and uh, it stops some other items to pass to it. So those items that are able to pass to it will be returned successfully. Those items that are unable to pass to it will be discarded. They will be thrown away. I come again. A filter allows some item. Filter allows some item to pass to it. Those items that are able to pass to it will be returned successfully. Why those ones that are unable to will be discarded? So let's see how it works. We also use it with array, just like map. The three functions we want to look at tonight, we use the three of them with array. Just like your, uh, like your map, if you pick each item here, if you give it to filter, filter gives it to my func, my func will assign it to whatever you put in, just like before. But the difference is that your filter, most times you use it to return a conditional statement, you return a conditional statement. Let's say I return num greater than, let's say, 14. Let's say I return this. So let's see how it works. If you pick the first value here, it will give it to here. Here I will give it to filter. Filter will give it to my func, and my func will assign it to num. If you check this condition, is num greater than 14? Is 8 greater than 14? That is false, right? Right? Hello. Hello, uh, Is it greater than fourteen? Yes. Is that? It's never. It's never. Greater than fourteen. Greater than fourteen. Uh huh. This, this condition is false, so it will discard yeah. the eight. It will throw it away. Then it goes to the next value, which is twelve. It will give it to this. It gives this to my phone. My phone will assign it to no. Is twelve greater than fourteen? No. It will discard it again. Mm -hmm. It will throw it away. It goes to the next value, which is 15. 15 will be given to filter. Filter gives this to my phone. My phone gives this to num. Is 15 greater than 14? Yes, this returns to. Yeah. So because it returns to, it will return that 15 successfully and that will be pushed inside A. Our class ends in 15 minutes' time. Okay, let's move on. So because. Uh, if that 15 meets this condition, it will return the 15 successfully and that will be pushed inside A. Then after when it's done, it goes to the next value which is 50. 50 will be given to filter. Filter will give my funk. My funk will give num. Is 50 greater than 14? Yes, 50 is greater than 14. It will return that value successfully and 50 will be pushed inside A. So when you check what is inside A at the end of the day, you will have just 15 and 50. Do you understand how this works? So, whenever this returns to, it will push it. If it returns first, it will discard it. It will discard it. Let's say I have num equals to, let's say, a 12. Let's look at this. When you run this, the first value here will be given to filter. Filter gives my funk. My funk gives num. Is 8 equals 12? No. It will discard it. It goes to the next value, which is 12. It gives this to my funk. My funk gives this. This gives num. Is 12 equals 12? Yes. This is going to return 12. That will be returned back and it will be pushed inside here. Then it goes to, it picks the next value, which is 15. 15 gives, uh, 15 will be given to this my funk, my funk will assign it to num. Is 15 equals 12? No, that will be discarded. Then it goes to the next value, which is 50. 15 will be given to filter. Filter will give it to my funk. My funk assign it to num. Is 50 equals 12? No, that will be discarded. So when you check A, you will only see 15 there. Let me. Uh, sorry, you only see 12. You only see 12. And that's because only 12 uh, met this condition. Any question on that? Okay. Now, just like your few, uh, like your map, you can have two arguments. Here. This second one also represents the index. So I can say, let me ask us this question. If I say, if not, if I is um, lesser than, uh, let's say, lesser than two. 
what do you think would be the value of A? What do you think would be the value of A? That should be 8 and 12. Yeah. Yeah. Good. 8 and 12. 8 and 12. Correct. 8 and 12. Correct. So, that's it. You can also, let's take it a, st a step further. And then, it's greater than 10. What do you think would be the value of A? That should be 2 and 9. Days. Just 12. Perfect. So that is the way the filter works. So let's assume you are given an array, and you are told that uh, write uh, calls that uh, will return values that are greater than a particular number in this array. Do you understand that will return values that are greater than, let's say, 12 in this array? You can easily use your filter to do that. Now, there is one part that I think we need to also consider before we leave this session. If uh, I is not equal to 2. What do you think this will give us? What do you think you will find inside A? This is index 0. This is index 1. <laughs> This is Zero index one. 2. This Zero. will fail this test. 15 will fail this test. Then 50 will pass it. 8, 12, 15. Right. Who doesn't understand this? So let's shorten it just like we did the other time. Yeah, we've successfully shortened it, but we can still shorten it further. So we can just cut this one out of this place. Let me put it here. Like this. You see, I've the same results. Again, the reason we are doing this is because I want you to get used to this format before we get to React JS. Okay, let's go to the last issue that I want to consider tonight. Find. I just press Ctrl Z. Find. Find works like your filter in the sense that it also returns a boolean, whether two or false. Filter returns a boolean, two or false. If it is two, that value will be returned successfully. If this is false, that value will be discarded. Find also does the same thing. The only difference is that filter returns every instance or all the values. Yeah, filter returns all values that meet this condition. Find on the other hand only returns the first value to meet the condition. I can't again. Filter returns all instances. Let's say, let me just say something we can easily work with. If this is greater than, let's say, uh, 10. Now, this will return from what we learned, this will return 12, 15, and 50, right? Because the theory meets this condition. Now, if this were to be fine, Find we only return the first one to meet the condition. Do you understand? And that's 12. Find we only return the first one to meet the condition. That's the difference between filter and find. Any question? Who doesn't understand? Okay. So with this now, I think we are now good to go. We can now move into React JS proper. So uh, before the next class, please download and install Node uh, Node JS on your device. Just Google Node JS download. Just Google it like this. Go to this nodejs.org. Download it. Install that of your operating system. Install it before the next. So next class we move to React JS. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Can we round it off at this point? Thank you. 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 Thank you.